Hi, this is Premjit from Sibilera.com. Today I thought I will share you one piece of information which one of our student asked in our learning community. We have courses on ETAPS and Revit and various other programs and registered students do have a community page where they can ask questions and keep on discussing about their doubts and other career aspirations. So here one student today asked me a question uh, by posting a ETAPS steel reinforcement details and the question is simple sir is this right steel here is zero at the support so his primary question is why is the steel zero here now this question is something simple but then if you are experienced but then if you are a beginner this is a really relevant question which he has asked here right now many of you might have the same doubt as he has and that's the reason i chose i will make a video and then post it in the larger group for the interest of all of you so to understand this question let me show you the entire picture he has taken a screenshot of a part of what is the total structure so if you come to the main structure this is something like this this is a small project that i had given in the course as an assignment it's a very small project but then this has all the complication that will make you really learn well so here if you see he is asking about this particular beam but let me transfer that problem to this beam so that it's having a bit more complication and you will have some more learning in that so his question is primarily if this beam from this column to this, this column is supported on this beam that's his assumption he's thinking that this beam which is not highlighted now the perpendicular one that is along grid b is the main beam and grid 6 beam is taking a support on that yeah so he's expecting a steel requirement here at the top that's his primary doubt so now how do you know if this is the main beam from column to column or the other one is the main beam yeah so who are experienced will be able to make it out with with the judgment but then there are situations where you have enough complications or you have less understanding of the structure and you are not able to make an assumption or an understanding or a judgment all by your own especially when you are a beginner you might find it difficult so let me just show you another example so here i have a blog here and in this blog i have mentioned a few things so look at this particular structure so now you have b1 and you have b2 and all are equal span so b1 and b2 have the same center to center span so in this b1 and b2 between this which is going to be the main beam and which is going to be the secondary beam so this is what we are going to focus because if you know this you are probably going to know the other answer as well so here b1 span and b2 span are same as i said the depth and the width of the beam are also same now which will support which now if you look here it's fairly simple again if you look at b1 the support is slightly smaller than what you have at b2 which means that the stiffness of b1 support is lesser than what you have in b2 b2 has a larger column or the orientation of the column is in a manner where it has more inertia inertia is bd cube by 12 yeah so d is your depth or your dimension of the column which is along your bending direction so your bending direction is along the span of the beam so your column dimension is more in that direction which means it's more stiff it's more rigid it's more fixed it has more inertia all these are same the meaning of all what i mentioned is all same because of this reason b2 is going to deflect less which means that b1 is going to take a support on that so b1 will be the secondary beam b2 will be the primary so to make it a bit more clear let me just sketch that and then show you so b2 which is here is having a larger column so here you have a smaller column assuming all other spans and all are same this is a2 this is b2 so the b2 is going to be having something like this if the b2 column was also smaller then what would have been your span moment would have been more because your stiffness is less which means that 
your deflection will be more see it's like a blanket held in position by two people say one person is standing here another person is standing here and both are holding a blanket and then say you put a weight or a stone on uh, the center of that now based on how tightly they are holding the deflection do happen yeah so if they are tightening this they are holding it really tight then the chances of deflection is lesser now if they are releasing their hand then the deflection will be more so it's like that so when you have a very large stiff column here the chances of deflection or the amount of deflection is lesser than the other so in this case b2 is likely to deflect lesser because of the larger stiffness fixity inertia whatever you call it because of that and for that reason b2 will be the primary beam and b1 will be the secondary beam so if you detail out b2 is likely to have a steel requirement if you look at even etaps steel final you will have something like this this is for b2 now when it comes to b1 since b1 is taking a support on b2 what the bending moment diagram will be is something like so its detail will be something like yeah so you may need extra but based on the amount of moment you have there so you may need extra reinforcement or not only after design you will be able to tell you this is how you decide so if the spans are also different if the depths are also different the complication increases so that's when sometimes you will fail to judge it on your own and you may have to rely on e tabs say for example you have slight variation in span yeah so here it is 5 meter here it is 5 meter here it is 5.5 meter 5.5 meter and this column is 450 and this column is 350 now span point of view this is more stiff but size point of view this is more stiff so how do you know which is going to be the main so this is where you will have to rely on software sometimes and understand inspect check the moments and shear and all that bending pattern and then understand which is going to be the primary so even in etaps model you can do it so i'll just show you how we can do that so i'll take an etaps model of this and i have already analyzed this so let me show you bending moment of grid number six so first i will display that here in plan itself so i'll go to moment am3 i will take dead load and live load for simplicity i am not getting into seismic and all that and i am going to display the moments so here you can see grid 6 versus grid b is what you want here we go to elevation and grid 6 and then show you this so here you can see the grid 6 bending moment yeah so it is not taking a support on the perpendicular beam the perpendicular beam is here and if that was the primary beam you would have had a hogging here so that's not happening it is between this and this so that's the reason this is a main beam the secondary beam is the perpendicular one so obviously here you don't need a top steel yeah your top steel starts from this point you have the requirement here beyond that you don't need top steel yeah so that's the reason he was getting zero steel at the top so now I have taken the grid B also on the right hand side. So here you can see that if you look here, you can see that it is taking a support at this beam. Yeah. So that's the reason you need to look into all the bending moment diagrams and then decide. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions on this, you can feel free to contact me at contact at .com or you can even WhatsApp me. When time permits, I will be able to get back to you on this. So thank you for watching. I hope you had a good learning from this video.